Testing. This is the first reading to transfer out to of our members. Vilma Tompog from Bethlehem SCA Church to Minnesota Conference SCA Church. And Priscilla Gonzalez from Bethlehem SCA Church to Luz Siete Adventist Church. We also have two transfer, three transfer in requests. Um, Jeffrey and Wenlin Williams from Williamsport SCA Church to Bethlehem SCA Church. And And Roman Escato, Escata from Allentown SCA Church to Bethlehem SCA Church. Uh, that will be the first reading, and uh, next week we will take a vote. I want to thank the children for the wonderful music and the program that they are presented. I want to thank Brother Alan for the music. And I want to thank each and every one of you, more so giving glory to God that we are here today. I want to thank the guests who have come to worship with us. You are so blessed to us, and we welcome you. Make this your church if it's possible. Let's pray. Loving Father God in heaven, we want to dive into your word. God, as I stand, may I shrink, and may your name be lifted high. God, touch my lips. What comes out, oh God, may you refine it, is my humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Our time is spent. Our program is long. I will do the best I can to make it short. We start. The day that disappeared. That sounds funny. How can a day disappear? There's an island And uh, that island is called Sandy Island, and it was in Australia. For many years, it was in the map. Sometimes, some, uh, some uh, students from the University of Sydney sailed to that island only not to find it. What happened? They only discovered it never was there. It was just an error. So, why do we have this story? This story comes to us if that island never existed, could it be that in the world we are living today, we could be, because of background, because of where we've been raised, could it be that we do things that do not exist? You know, as a little boy, I thought my father was a superhero. Nobody could stop him. If anyone messed with me, I called my dad and he messed them up. But as I grew up, I, thought, I found no. It was just an ordinary person. But as a little boy, I thought he could do anything. So in our study today, we are going to look at, could there be things that we, 
we see today, or some days we see today, or some days we worship today, or we see other people worship today, that actually do not exist, the Bible will talk to us. We will start with what John says. In John, in John 12 and verse 9, the Bible says, So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world. Underline that word. He deceives the whole world. You and I are here. So underline that word. We know in the Garden of Eden, Satan deceived our parents. And that is why when you read in the, Old, in the New Testament, Jesus himself refers to Satan as the father of lies. Now, if Satan was cast from heaven, and he is here today. And in heaven, we are told he was able to deceive a third of the angels. Remember, angels never sinned before. But this man, Satan, was able to convince them. And he came with them. Then ask yourself, if he is able to deceive angels, who is Fred if he is not covered by the blood of the Lamb? In John, we read, Jesus said, if you abide in my word, you are indeed my disciple. And you shall know the truth, and the truth does do what, church? Let's be that. What has Jesus said? If you abide in my word, what will you and I be? Free. We will know the truth and the truth will set us free. So that means background, those who are around us will never be able to influence us. The Bible says, God is word is where our hope and the security is. You know, where I come from, most banks had policemen outside. And the reason the policemen were there to provide security. Friends, you want security? You want hope? Dive into his word. He has said, it will set you and it will set me free. The truth is important. And we can divide the truth into two parts. For those who have done some research, truth can be put in error. Truth can be put 
in empirical form and in that order. But when we come to the Bible, truth is nothing but the word of God. Truth is nothing but the word of God. It's not common today for people to say, you know what? I believe, but I can't say I am a Christian. You know, we have, we have met people as we walk by. They say, yeah, I believe I am a Christian. But, you know, as you dig by, you know, you find that they really do not know who this Christ they talk about is. I have the clickers uh, not misbehaving. So, when we look at The Bible tells us that keeping something in mind that the devil is here. He was cast down here and he is doing all that he can do to influence you, to convince you, to draw you away from our God. Now, a question comes. Could it be that Satan could bring deception into the church that could convince people they are honoring God when actually they are honoring, they are not honoring God? Could it be possible that you and I I hear today, or I've been coming to this church thinking that we are honoring God, but we are not. It's a question to ask ourselves. And how can we know the answer? Is to go to God, who is our God, and He will guide us and say the truth will set us free. The fourth commandment. As we read it in Exodus 20 from verse 8 to 11. It starts remember for those of us who have children, when do you use the word remember? Who can? When do you use the word remember for those who have children? Or the, for those who have had children and they are left? Have you used the word remember sometime? When have you used it? Sister Spina, have you used the word remember sometime? When have you used it to your children? 
when I want to emphasize and just make it clear that they understand what I said. So in essence, what you're trying to say is very important. You're trying to stress to your children to really get it that it's very important. God, who is your creator, who is my creator, who is my God? wrote the fourth commandment and say to you and to me, remember the Sabbath day and do what? And keep it holy. So then, what is the Sabbath? Keeping it holy. The Sabbath means to rest. You know, I've challenged my young friends that I teach in the lower classes. Sometimes they think Sabbath is resting, is to sleep a little longer because it's rest. We will see if that's what God is talking about. Sabbath is time to connect with each other. Now I'll ask, if you say Sabbath is rest, that's how my friends told me downstairs in our classes sometime, then when will you connect with others and you are sleeping? So really rest, when we talk of the Sabbath, does not mean <laughs> sleeping a little longer. In fact, the spirit of prophecy says, that is even the day you need to wake, wake, wake up with the birds. I said that somewhere in the city and they, they have never heard birds and said, what are you talking about? I said, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> but where I come from, there are birds. Next, Sabbath. It's time to do what? To connect with God. So when God said, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy, that is what he's talking about. Connect with others. When we have our lesson study, we are connecting with others. And we are also connecting with God because we are inviting the Holy Spirit to come and guide us in areas we do not understand. Sabbath is a memorial. You know, I've gone to Washington, and they have what they call the Washington Mem Memorial. If you go to most cities, they have memorials about heroes who have passed. Why do they have them? Just to remember. So what? Then God tells you that the Sabbath is a memorial. That means you need to remember about it. So Sabbath is a memorial. Those are uh, some of the examples that um, I have talked about. Those are about memorials and why memorials are very, very important. Let me just, the USS Arizona, and for those who, like my brother Mike, uh, that is something that is very right. So that reminds us, especially those who have worked in the army, that how they use that in the wars. So memorial is reminding you of what has happened. So when God said the Sabbath is a memorial, it's reminding you what God has done for us as a human race. Now, let's look at the value of 
what the Sabbath is. God made us. God made you and made me in his image and likeness. So what value do you think you have, Brother Nelson? Wonderful. If God made you in his own image and likeness, what value do you have? Very great value. Amen. So you are very, very important to God. And if you are very important to God, God expects you and I also for us to have that relationship to abide. As we saw that if you love me, keep my commandments. He planned for you. He created you in his image. And when sin came, he did not stop there. He devised a plan for us to be recreated again. And that's why Paul says in 1 Corinthians 5.17 that those who are in Christ are new creatures. So let's see. I have a question here. It shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone that which is a memory of God's creative power should come and attack. The Sabbath in the marriage two institutions from the Garden of Eden friends are under attack. They are under attack. Remember our topic was the day that did what? Disappeared. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall not work you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your strangers. Who is within your gates? For six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the seas and all that is in them and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. God did that because you and I are valuable. He did that for you and for me. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, allowed it. God set aside special 24-hour period to rest, to connect within ourselves, to connect with God and as a memorial. But friends, look at the society we live today. Majority of people who claim allegiance to God do not recognize or keep 
the seventh day Sabbath. God has said majority do not do. In fact, even those who do, do not do it according to the will of God. So our study today is really to take us back to know that God has given you six days. He only needs one seventh to connect with him, to connect with others, and to do that which will lift his name high. In my time, as when I was in school, the dictionaries that I read, the divination of the Sabbath, they read, the Sabbath was for the Jews. I don't know if you ever came across such a dictionary, but the dictionary that uh, I had in my grade four, that is what the definition of the Sabbath was. And most young friends always questioned me, why do you worship a day for the Jews? But let's, die, let's, let's dig into the Bible and see if that is true. Sabbath was observed when the children of Israel left the wilderness. They were in the wilderness. When they were in the promised land, they observed the Sabbath. Jesus himself, as we have seen in previous lessons, like in Luke 4, 16, he observed the Sabbath. Let me ask you a question. We are in the junction of Makeda and, ja uh, and, and Junction Field. Most of us come from Bethlehem. The speed limit here, I think, is 35. Can we, as members of this church today, decide, you know, we are going to change the speed limit of this road? No. There would be a process for us to do that. God... Remember the Sabbath? Keep it holy. God did not change it. Christ observed it. Who changed it then? Where was that cancel? It's only God who could do it. When we look in the New Testament, we find the first day of the week, Sunday, is mentioned eight times. Five times, it is just mentioned by passing. Three times, it's mentioned with extra information added. And that is what we want to dive into. And we'll look at John 20, verse 19. And John, who was the beloved apostle of Jesus Christ, said this. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for the fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace 
be with you. My question to you, were they worshiping? According to what you have read, were they worshiping? No. They were there. They had assembled because they were fearing. Because Christ had been killed and they did not know that probably they could be the next. So, many of our brothers and sisters used that to say it was an assemble of worship. But they were just together because uh, they were in fear. As strange as it may seem, some have said that this demonstrates the disciples were together on a Sunday. It was a church day and the Sabbath had been changed. Some people say the Sabbath was changed in honor of the resurrection. Friends, the resurrection is important. It's important, the resurrection is important, but it, the Sabbath was not changed because of that. The resurrection is important as the day of his death was important, but it was not changed. In Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, Verse 16, chapter 16 and verse 1 and 2. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given orders to the churches of Galatia, so you must do so. On the first day of the week, let each one of you lay something aside, storing up as he may prosper, that there could be, there be no corrections when I come. So many of our friends use that to say that Paul had a congregation on a Sunday. But Paul, this is something that was done for some time. Paul, there was famine in Jerusalem. And in most cases, when we have issues, we have calamities, we come together, put food together, and we help. That is exactly what Paul was doing. In Acts chapter 18, verse 1 and verse 4, it reads, After these things, Paul departed from Athens and went to Corinth, and he reasoned, with the, he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded both the Jewish and the Greeks. Now on the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul re ready to, de to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. Again, many our friends use this to say that Paul was preaching on the first day. But, uh, you know, from, as we have seen from our previous lessons, the day starts from sunset, the Sabbath starts from sunset to sunset. Paul had a mission elsewhere. 
he wanted to share to them all that he had before he left. So that's why we see that he continued his mission till midnight. There were many lambs in the upper room where they were gathered together and in the window sat a certain young man named Eutychus who was sinking into a deep sleep. He was overcome by sleep and as Paul continued speaking, he fell down from the third floor and was taken dead. In Leviticus 23 and verse 32, that gives us the landmark when the Sabbath starts and when it ends. We also see in Mark chapter 1 and verse 32, at evening when the sun sets. So that, those gives us the landmarks on when the Sabbath starts and when it ends. It's now Sunday day, and he walked 14 miles. Here is talking about Paul after he finished giving and teaching, he, he left on a Sunday for his mission. And uh, that is very evidence that if it was a worship, Paul could have worshipped and not traveled. In Malachi 3.16, For I am the Lord I do not change. Therefore, you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. God is God. He does not change. And his law does not change. In Revelation 14 and verse 7, it says, With a loud voice, fear God, give him glory. Give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heavens and earth and the seas and the springs of water. And that is really a quote uh, from the New Testament, more specific uh, from uh, the book of Genesis. In Luke 16, we saw that it was his custom. He went to the synagogue and read. So another question comes to us. Thank you. Another question comes to us. John, in the book of Revelation, he wrote, I was in the spirit on the day of the Lord. Which day was that? In Acts, but Peter and other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than man. Friends, we go a, a lot as we tarry in this journey. But how important could it be, as Peter says, 
that it's very important to obey God than man. Brother Peter brought the idea of manna when he was giving the children's story. And that story comes from Exodus 16. And Peter took us through. We want to see how did this change come. If we go back to the fourth century, that is why, that is where trouble started. We discover that an emperor by the name Constantine, his government was fracturing up, was breaking up. Because we had Christians and we had the pagans. He thought to himself, for my kingdom to be strong, I have to bring these two groups together. And we read, on the venerable day of the sun, let the magistrates, the people residing in cities, rest and let the shops be closed. You know, last quarter, in our college ed class, we were dealing with religious liberty. And we discovered in our neighboring state, New Jersey, there are still cities that have laws that you cannot go shopping on a Sunday. Today, as I'm speaking. If you're doubting, just check. Neighboring state. And this is, this is, this is where trouble started. The sun was a foremost god with a hidden dawn. There is, in truth, something royal, kingly about the sun making it fit emblem of Jesus, the son of justice. Brothers, that is, that is shocking. Hence, the church in these countries could seem to have keep the whole pagan. So what they, because the kingdom was breaking down, he wanted to unite it together. So they came together. The church was allowed to bring those who had their traditions. They came to the church, but they did not leave the traditions behind. You know, Paul tells us that in Christ you are a new creature. All things are passed away and now they are new. So when you come to Christ, the old things need to be abandoned. But in this scenario, they were not. And that is why we have what we have today. I'll skip that. You can screenshot for those who are screening. Christians shall not judicize and be idle on Saturday. But the Lord's day they shall especially honor. And here when we talk of the Lord's day, now it's been changed. The Lord's day there now, they're talking of Sunday. A few questions here for you and I. Which is the Sabbath day? And the answer is Saturday is the Sabbath day. We have seen that from what we have mentioned. Why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? Because the Catholic Church transferred 
the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. You want to learn more about? There is evidence in that book. You can screenshot that. I want to skip that because of time. I also want to skip that. Was that something else? You may read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, and you will not find a single line authorizing the sanctification of Sunday. The scriptures enforce the religious observance of Saturday. God said he does not change. But here we see man changing that. I want to make some conclusions here. And the questions can come closer to us. Who made you? Who made you? Who died for you? Who redeemed you? Who suffered for you? Who rose for you? The answer is, who is the, what is the answer? Jesus Christ did that all for you. Sometimes, friends, it's not easy because of our history. I said that before. Probably History dictates sometimes who we are. And this reminds me of Brother Tom's story. Brother Tom allowed me to share it. Brother Tom was a Catholic and got the message and joined our church many years back. But he had a sister who always questioned him. And the sister was looking at the prominent man who were from our village. And the sister always asked Brother Tom, so and so, they are learned men, they are well established, they go to Sunday. You want to tell me they do not know what they're doing? Sometimes we do this because of our family history. But the Bible is very clear. It's only one man who has died for you. It's only one man who has redeemed you, and that is Jesus Christ. We might be loving our brothers. We might be loving our sisters. We might be loving our community. But there is one man, it's Jesus Christ, who came and died for us. Friends, he is coming again. His law will stand. You like it or not, his law will stand. And he's coming for those who are ready to, 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 to who are ready for him to take him take them home. My prayer to you, friends. My prayer this afternoon. Probably we have been here. I've been a seven-day Adventist almost all my life because I was born in a, an Adventist home, and that's not a ticket. Ticket is knowing Jesus Christ who died for me. That is all that it matters. Not my, I love my family. I love my wife. But Jesus Christ supersedes all. If the mouth of God has spoken, friends, let's hold it. He is coming. 
He is not coming to take anyone who is coming. He is coming to take those who have kept his command. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Friends, I want to leave you with that. If you love me, keep my commandments. May God be with you. What do you say? Amen, Amen. Oh, brother, uh, elder friend.